story written by Dr. Karen Traceman. It is called Julie the Giraffe and it's illustrated by Sarah Peacock. Julie the Giraffe lived in the African savanna in the middle of the beautiful Gorongora crater in Tanzania in East Africa. She spent her days roaming gracefully to the vast grassy plains. Although Jilly the giraffe had many happy and wonderful things in her world, she still sometimes felt worried, sad, and that she just wasn't good enough. Sometimes she felt as if she was different and worse than the other animals. Sometimes we all feel like that. Jilly felt bad about herself because she was much taller than everyone else, which made her stand out from the crowd. The flamingos gracefully sipped water while balancing on one leg, but she had to stretch her neck and bend her neck and legs to drink from the water hole. Jilly felt the other animals thought she looked silly. Jilly's tongue was not pink like most other animals. It was long and black, which helped her to eat leaves from tall trees, but at the water hole she felt embarrassed using her tongue to lap up the cool water. Finally, Jilly stood out because of the colourful mosaic patches that covered her whole body. Jilly the giraffe had some fantastic friends, but some of the animals who didn't know her well would be unkind to Jilly. They would laugh, point, stare and say mean things about her. Oh Jilly, you are so uncool with those long legs. Ha! Look at her ugly black tongue. On days when Jilly the giraffe felt sad and bad about herself, she would look at her reflection glistening in the water. She would wish that she was someone else, anyone but Jilly. Jilly wanted to be liked by everyone. She really wanted to fit in and be just like all the other animals. So she would try to make herself shorter by crouching down and stooping her head. Camouflage herself by colouring her patches in with mud. Use her gymnastic skills to find new ways of drinking water from the water hole. But whatever she tried, it didn't work. She was still Jilly the Giraffe. One day, Jilly the Giraffe was feeling sad and was trying to hide from all the other animals behind the large green leaves of an acacia tree when she was spotted by Lauren the lioness. She gruffly greeted Jilly. Peekaboo, I found you. Jilly sighed and let out a snort. Of course you did. I'm pretty hard to miss. Lauren grinned and said, That's true. Look at you. That's what's great and special about you. Jilly the giraffe looked surprised and confused. What do you mean? That is what is special and great about me. Lauren the lioness let out a delighted roar. I love that you're different. You're one of a kind. You bring colour and fun into the greenness of the trees and you can reach the trickiest leaves with your long neck and tongue. Also, you are so kind and caring to everyone. Lauren pointed her paw. You remind me of a beautiful mosaic or patchwork, like the one on the sacred magical baobab tree over there. That baobab tree is made up of many, many different pieces. Some areas of the tree are smooth, some are rough, some are soft, some are big, some are small, and some are even fluffy. But when you put them all together, they fit like an amazing puzzle and tell a wonderful story. Just like a rainbow, each color is as important as the next. A rainbow would not look as magical if there was a colour missing. Imagine a rainbow with no yellow or no blue. Jilly the giraffe strode up to the nearby mosaic baobab tree to take a closer look. She had never noticed how beautiful it was before, but now she could see it clearly. She smiled. Wow, it really is a patchwork of colourful and beautiful pieces. Lauren the lioness nodded. And do you know what is even more exciting? Everyone who looks at the baobab tree will notice different patterns. It's just like looking through a kaleidoscope. 
Lauren Carridan. Sometimes to truly appreciate something and understand it, you need to look at it in a new way. Like taking a really close look with a magnifying glass or looking at it from a great distance as if you were an eagle soaring high in the sky or had a magical carpet that could fly. Julie the giraffe looked excited. She started moving around the baobab tree, thinking about how she could discover a new way of looking at it. She tried pushing her face up close, standing on her tippy toes to look down on it, walking backwards until the baobab tree was so small and far away that it looked like a small shrub. She was amazed. Wow, you are right, Lauren. It really does look different, depending on how I look at it. Lauren the lioness nodded, agreeing. And it's not just the baobab tree. You see, Jilly, we're all different. No two animals are the same. That's what makes us all special and cool. We are all precious and deserve to be appreciated. Jilly the giraffe smiled shyly. She had never thought of herself as special and cool. This was a whole new way of thinking about the world as well as looking at it. A bit like a magic mirror. She was still getting used to the idea but did like the sound of it. Jilly the giraffe began thinking about what made her special. I suppose I quite like how I can make Halo the Hippo laugh. I'm quite good at painting with mud. I also have super sharp eyes. I can see almost the whole of Savannah. Lauren the lioness roared with laughter. You see, there are so many things that make you special. In fact, I bet you could fill a whole treasure box with the things that make you feel good and special. Maybe you could ask some of the other animals to see what ideas they have. The next day, when Jilly arrived at Acacia Academy, she cautiously approached her teacher, Mrs. Tangeru, the tortoise, and said, I know this might sound a bit strange, but Lauren the lioness has been teaching me about how sometimes I forget the good things about me. I'd like to find out if there are things that you and my classmates at school like and appreciate about me. Could you help? Mrs. Tengeru the tortoise grinned. That's a great idea. Let me have a moment to think. Jilly felt nervous while Mrs. Tengeru quietly thought hard about Jilly and her strengths. After some time, Mrs. Tengeru spoke up. Well, Jilly, I've been thinking hard about your question and I have a long list of things that are special about you. Two of my favorite things is that you have brilliant listening skills and you're a very hard worker, especially in gymnastics. Jilly was surprised and proud to hear about these positive treasures from Mrs. Tengeru. Some of Jilly's classmates heard what Mrs. Tengeru was saying and piped up. I can think of more. You're a great peacemaker. You're very thoughtful and always help to calm me when I'm arguing with someone, exclaimed the same the zebra. You're the best classmate to have as a lookout and protect us from predators because of your amazing height, chirped Ollie the oxpecker. You're really friendly and fun, shrieked Binny the baboon. Wally the warthog trotted over and rested a hoof on Jilly and snorted. I really like how your patches brighten up the savannah like the sun. He continued, it's strange, but sometimes the things that you don't like about yourself are in fact your most precious jewels. Some animals used to be mean and horrible about my pig-like snout, but then I realized that it makes me unique. It helps me be a super skilled digger, which makes me very useful indeed when a hole is needed. Mrs. Tengiru was so excited by her class's team spirit and by how many ideas they were coming up with that she wrote down everyone's ideas on a tree trunk. Binny the baboon chattered. It's great to have a list like this. It's just like keeping memories in your heart or in your head. But you can look at the tree trunk and remember all those special things whenever you want to, especially if you can't remember them 
and are having a tricky day. Mrs. Tangiero was very pleased with her tree trunk. Then she had another idea. I know. Why don't we play a game and think of lots of lovely words which match the letters of Ginny's name? When you do this, it's called creating an acronym. How about G? Mrs. Tangiero asked. Oh, definitely generous. Ginny always shares her favourite leaves with everyone, Hello the hippo quote. Aye. The classroom choir cheered in unison, intelligent and interesting. L. Binny the baboon excitedly barked. She is lovable and bringing loads of laughter to us all. Hmm, this is tricky. There's another L. Any other ideas? asked Mrs. Tenkiro. She's loyal. She has been a very good friend for a long time and is always there for me, Zane the zebra proudly shared. Wow, so many terrific things. Last but not least, why? That's a difficult letter, the class squealed. Ooh, I know, said Wally the warthog. How about youthful? She's so energetic and full of life. Mrs. Tengiru clapped and cheered. What a great game. Let's do this tomorrow for each of you. Everyone has things that makes them special. We just need to notice, share and celebrate them. Ginny was amazed at all of the new things that she was learning about herself. Maybe being different is not so bad after all. It might even be cool. Later that day, Jimmy reread all of the words on the tree trunk and used them to inspire one of her famous mud paintings. It included all of the things that she was proud of and that made her special and happy. After finishing her mud painting, Jilly the giraffe walked proudly out of Acacia Academy School. She was standing tall with her head held high and her eyes sparking brightly and she walked with a spring in her step. The sun bounced off her colourful, one-of-a-kind mosaic of patches creating beautiful rainbows across the savannah. The end. And makes happy the skies The merry bells ring As they welcome the spring And the skylark and thrush And the birds of the bush While they sing loud around To the bells cheerful sound And our sports shall be seen On the echoing green 